Before we get started, hey! Remember that one time I was interviewed in Nintendo Force Magazine, the awesome, fan-driven, spiritual successor to Nintendo Power Magazine that comes with a free poster in every issue? Well, that's old news! Poosh! Posh! Get out of here! Lame now. Way more exciting! What if I told you that your buddy Arlo now has... Oh, it's still in the bag. A regular feature! That's right, every single bi-monthly issue of Nintendo Force Magazine includes an installment of Arlo's headcanon. Guaranteed the best and probably only Nintendo fanfiction printed in an actual magazine. Sometimes thought-provoking, sometimes heartbreaking, sometimes completely stupid. It's sure to eat up at least a few minutes of your day. Follow the link in the description to sign up for Nintendo Force Magazine today! Also, look at these posters. This one came with two. They're double-sided! It's awesome! Whoa! My friends, my friends, I hope you're having a fantastic holiday season. I know I am because this is my very favorite time of year. Christmas is my very favorite holiday, and that is, of course, because of the food. I mean, I mean the, uh, the peace and goodwill to men, the, the, the giving, giving and all that. Family and giving. No, but seriously, though, it's the food. Uh, like, without a doubt. December also means it's the end of the year, though, and while Nintendo is only just now wrapping up one of the best years they've had in ages in terms of business, success, and fan satisfaction, I can't help but wonder what next year will bring. In fact, the amazingness of 2017 makes me more curious than ever what their 2018 will look like. One of my favorite things to do before big events like E3 is make predictions, and specific ones. Namely, what games will be announced. Then afterward, it's fun to look back and see what I got right. Like, remember when I predicted that the next Mario game would feature Mario running around in a realistic human city? When I when I totally saw that coming? That definitely happened. Don't look it up though, you can, you can just believe me, really. Anyway, I thought this December it would be fun to predict next year in its entirety, what games will be announced, what events will happen, what services will launch, all of it. And it all comes with my 100% guarantee that maybe some of it will be right, maybe. And let me add before we begin, this is probably going to seem a little too idealistic or something. I'll try to be as realistic as I can, but with this sort of thing, it's hard to be completely realistic, mainly because it's hard to make predictions about things you just aren't familiar with, and obviously lots of new and unfamiliar stuff will be announced by Nintendo. My predictions have to be based on the stuff that I know, so it might be that my outlook is a tad skewed. But hey, we'll see. Without further ado, let's get started. January. In mid to late January, Nintendo will have a great big Nintendo Direct. This will be just like the Switch presentation in January 2017 where they talk about most of the titles coming to the Switch throughout the rest of the year. The only difference is, you know, it won't be live, it'll just be a Nintendo Direct. That will, of course, make this the biggest and most important event of 2018. It'll feature two major game announcements. The first, Super Mario Maker 2.0. New parts to use, new baddies, new locations, new modes, and a revamped community. Most notably, the game will feature the option of co-op play using multiple Joy-Cons. Touchscreen will be supported for building, but with an added cursor option, movable with a control stick or using gyro aiming. Super Mario Maker 2.0 will be set for Spring 2018. The second announcement, Super Smash Bros. 4 Definitive Edition. I know I very recently stated that I didn't think Smash 4 would get ported to the Switch because of naming issues and because that makes it harder to release an exclusive Smash Bros. 4 Switch down the line, but I'm gonna go out on a limb here. Having a title that strong on the Switch that early when it's already doing so well would kick sales into maximum warp. Smash for Wii U sold so well despite barely anyone owning a Wii U, so getting it on Switch as soon as possible might be better than waiting however many years for a full sequel. So what'll Smash 4 Definitive Edition include? All the DLC, of course, and most of the 3DS stages, though for some reason not all of them. It won't include the 3DS exclusive mode Smash Run, which will come as a disappointment to many, but it will include a few new modes and features not available in the originals. It'll feature more or less the same online component as Smash for Wii U, but the biggest focus in all the game's advertising, of course, will be Joy-Con sharing and System Link multiplayer. It'll be slated for summer 2018. In addition to these two games, Nintendo will finally blow the lid off their upcoming online service. It'll cost $30 a year and will function much like the PlayStation Network. In addition to enabling you to play multiplayer games online, the service will come with one free game every month, though there'll always be NES games and as such the feature won't be particularly exciting. The smartphone app that pairs with the service will allow people to chat with their friends while they play, and while people will still be bummed that they can't do it right through their Switches, the whole thing will be much better implemented than it was in Splatoon 2. Nintendo Switch Online will be set to launch in the summer to coincide with Smash Brothers and to help ease some of the inevitable disappointment that many kids will feel when they realize they have to shell out even more money in order to play their new copy of Smash Online. Through the end of the year, owners of the game will be able to buy their first year of service for 20 bucks. On top of Nintendo Switch Online, the Big Inn will also finally, finally announce the return of the Virtual Con console. The bad news is that all the prices will be raised by a couple bucks. NES games will be 7 bucks, SNES will be 10, and N64 will be 12. 
The good news is that they're gonna add GameCube support. There was once a time when I thought they would prefer to go the remaster route and thus would not be releasing GameCube games for the VC, but I think I've changed my mind. They're gonna do it and they're gonna make them 15 bucks each. More good news, we'll be able to transfer our old purchases from our Wii's and Wii U's, though on the bad side again, it will require a convoluted process of downloading a special app on both your Switch and your old system and connecting them both to the internet and doing a lengthy transfer. And worst of all, you have to choose which ones you wanna move over because Nintendo will want you to pay a couple bucks per title to make up for the higher prices in the same way we had to pay to update our Wii VC games with Wii U features. But good news again, more old titles than we expected will feature the ability to play online, though these titles will rotate every month in order to ensure that there's always someone to play with. Also, every single virtual console game will support video recording and sharing. The service will be set to launch in the summer. This Nintendo Direct will also feature some other minor third-party announcements, though nothing mind-blowing. We'll get a new trailer for Kirby Star Allies, which will be given a solid March release date. The game will come with a set of four new amiibo, naturally. No word on Yoshi, Metroid, or Pokemon. The Direct will be criticized by many for announcing what they see as, quote, two more Wii U ports and a rip-off paid online service. However, reception within the greater Nintendo community will be mainly positive, as they'll be very excited to get their hands on Mario Maker and Smash, and we'll see $30, half the price of Xbox Live Gold and PSN, as a bargain. The higher virtual console prices will be the only thing they're genuinely displeased with. February won't have any first-party releases, but Nintendo will have their winter Nindy showcase and a good handful of indie and smaller third-party games will hit the Switch. March will be all about Kirby. Star Allies will release, and that'll pretty much be it for March. More indies and third-party stuff, as always. April won't have any major releases, but Nintendo will have their quarterly Direct, which will feature one big surprise. Teaser trailer, featuring a Luigi's Mansion-style ghost being flashed and pulled at by a vacuum off-screen. Just as it gets sucked up, a toad holding a Poltergust 3000 stumbles into the shot in a comedic fashion. And thus, we have a cooperative Luigi's Mansion game for Switch. Big focus on puzzle solving and overcoming challenges with one or more additional players, and they're doing it Mario Brothers 2 style, Luigi Mario Peach Toad. Initially, it'll be unclear if there's a single player element. Naturally, many will be disappointed by the smaller budget feel of the game and the focus on multiplayer, but most will admit it still looks promising. The game will be set for launch in the fall. The rest of the Direct will feature other minor announcements, including one for a Borderlands port, kind of out of the blue. A little smash talk, naturally, wrapping up with a new trailer and a big overview of Super Mario Maker 2.0. May will see the release of Mario Maker, and Nintendo will market the game hard, with the same skill they've been applying to all of the Switch's games. And once it's on the Switch, the world will see how awesome the idea is and act as though the Wii U version never happened. Everyone will shout, you can finally make your own Mario levels! Reggie will go on Jimmy Fallon to show off the game, and much fun will be had. Now for June, the second big one of the year. Virtual console titles will hit the eShop just before E3 with F-Zero GX leading the charge for GameCube games. Then of course, we'll have another big fat Nintendo Direct for E3. The presentation will only feature one big, big game announcement and it'll be for Retro Studios' new game. This will be a brand new IP and Nintendo's first push to establish a big, core, non-multiplayer, non-eShop IP in years. It'll be some sort of grand looking adventure game with some unique gameplay elements and we'll get a really good taste of the gameplay in the trailer. TBA 2019, reception will be great. The next biggest thing will be a DLC pack for Super Mario Odyssey. It'll be a $20 season pass type of deal like we've seen with several Nintendo games of late, but this time it'll come with a twist. Each of the three new worlds the pack introduces will be themed after a major holiday. In October, they'll release a spooky graveyardy Halloween kingdom. In November, they'll release a kingdom where you run around a Thanksgiving feast for literal giants, navigate the dinner table and jumping on pots and pans in a huge kitchen, etc. Then in December, a snowy North Pole-esque Christmas kingdom. Each will naturally come with a number of new costumes to wear. Santa suit, turkey suit, jack-o'-lantern suit, that kind of thing. So after Mario gets another moment in the spotlight, Fire Emblem for Switch will finally get a full reveal. It'll be big and the battles will be more visually spectacular than they've ever been. And of course, there will be a big focus on local multiplayer. Slated for Fall 2017. Next up, Smash 4 will get one new character in a fun animated trailer, and it'll be Inkling Boy and Girl. Metroid Prime 4 will get a teaser trailer, but only a teaser with no gameplay and the internet will just about explode. We'll all be deeply hurt that we didn't get to see more, but what we do see will leave us more excited and foaming at the mouth than ever. Yoshi will get a big new trailer, fully showcasing what the game has to offer. New line of amiibo, as is simply the way of things. It'll get a solid release date in September. No word on the next Pokemon, though they will announce some sort of spin-off for the eShop. For third party, Project Octopath Traveler will get a full reveal and a winter release window. Wolfenstein 2 will finally be given a release date in August. Rockstar will announce Grand Theft Auto V for Switch and there will be much rejoicing. Ubisoft will announce a port of an old Tom Clancy game and the Assassin's Creed Ezio collection. 
Then of course, other third-party stuff sprinkled in, probably something on Mega Man 11. As expected, the June Direct will draw criticism from people who were hyped up by the previous year and expected too much, but by most it will be seen as a strong showing from Nintendo. So July will roll around, and following a dedicated mini Direct, Smash Brothers will launch along with Nintendo Switch Online. A tiny minority of people will continue to loudly complain that it's just a port, but the rest of us will be too busy playing 8-player Smash on the go to notice. July will also see the release of Borderlands. It'll only be the first one though, and it'll be priced too high, so there won't be a lot of hype around it. Wolfenstein 2 will release in August, but nothing will come out of Nintendo other than the Summer Nindy Showcase. In September, we'll get the year's final Nintendo Direct, but it'll be pretty small, with nothing major announced beyond a few more third-party ports. Happy with sales of Skyrim, Bethesda will announce Fallout 3 for Switch. Nintendo will talk about Yoshi one last time, along with Luigi's Mansion and a little more info on the Mario DLC. Then, of course, before September's up, we'll get Yoshi. October will see the release of the new Luigi's Mansion. There will be continued grumbling about it not being a, quote, full Luigi's Mansion game, but it will nevertheless be warmly received by critics. On top of that, we'll get the first chunk of Mario DLC. November will bring Fire Emblem after a dedicated mini direct for the game, then the second chunk of Mario DLC close to Thanksgiving. Project Octopath Traveler, with its shiny new name, hopefully, will also release. Finally, December will bring us the final chunk of Mario DLC. Beyond Fire Emblem, this is really the only thing Nintendo's got for the holiday season, but they use it as a way to drive new sales using Mario's face for a second Christmas in a row. They put a big spotlight on it, they have a big marketing push, and they sell some fancy Super Mario Odyssey Complete Edition that comes with a new Santa Suit Mario amiibo and a code for the DLC for $80. So that's what I predict for Nintendo in 2018. You'll notice that I didn't mention the 3DS. That's because it'll see a handful of smaller third-party titles and maybe one or two really small Nintendo-developed ones just to rake in one last chunk of dough from that media install base but there really isn't gonna be much overall. Nintendo will finish up whatever they're working on, but the early success of the Switch means that the 3DS will effectively reach the end of its life in 2018. It made sense to keep the little guy alive for an extra year or so while the Switch got its legs, but moving Pokemon over makes me feel like everything's going to move over. Nintendo's gotta move on sometime, and I feel like 2018 is that time. You'll also notice that overall, 2018 won't be quite as mind-blowing as 2017. That's because the more I think about it, the more I feel like 2017's rate of massive releases isn't exactly sustainable. 2018 will still be a very good year, still better than they've managed in past years with past platforms, but it'll be something of a resting period. 2019 will bring Retro's new IP, and Metroid and Pokemon will act as another double whammy along the same lines as Mario and Zelda this year, though admittedly Metroid isn't nearly as big as either of those two, but hey, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Point is, 2018 will feature games that are a little smaller, but still plenty exciting. And now that 2017 has proven that the Switch is most definitely a platform worth developing for, 2018 will see a great surge of third parties. I'm sure lots and lots of ones that I did not mention here. It'll still be mostly ports and indies, as developers will still need more time to develop exclusives because they only just got started recently when they saw how well the Switch was doing, but those ports and indie games will help strengthen the library. 2018 won't be a flashy year, a year for one megaton release after the other, but it'll be a strong year. It'll continue to strengthen the Switch's identity and grow that install base. So take all that as absolute fact, ladies and gentlemen, because I forgot to mention until now, my dad works at Nintendo. And, and he tells me all this stuff, so it's definitely true. Also, my dad is Reggie fils and he let me play the new Zelda on, on the Ultra Switch, which is the next Nintendo system. Also, I have a gold Charizard, but I can't show you because my dad, who is Reggie fils took away my Game Boy. And I got the Triforce and Ocarina of Time, but then my little brother deleted my save file.